Good morning. I'm gonna do this in English. Today I'll be flying uh, for my well, our VA virtual airline, Anders Middendien virtual airline, at DC6. And this video is um, one in English because I want to reach out to a more broader audience than just Dutch um, and focus on two parts. Basically, the first is um, how does our VA work, and secondly. How do it wor does it work in conjunction with um, Microsoft Flight Simulator, specifically the PNG DC6? So what I'm doing at the moment is doing a grand tour, so to speak. Um, we have a DC6 German registration, which is normally based here in Düsseldorf. Düsseldorf, Düsseldorf, it's not showing up. Düsseldorf, there it is but has made its way via other flyers to Africa and what I'm doing is taking it on a tour across Africa all the way back to Düsseldorf it's for me a new plane so I'm learning it um, but also a fun way to do this and by earning money and revenue for the airline um, the bit I'm gonna do today is a short hop it's over here it's very short for DC6 from Sikupe to Maputo uh, in Mozambique um, 53 miles which is very short for DC3 uh, as you can see I have quite some longer legs in between also but for this video the short one is a cool one so that's FDSK to FQMA now if I go to the planning screen for the airline this is my planning screen my pilot stuff um, the last flights that have been done by various pilots, these are all the pilots, etc, etc. Uh, I can message them, uh, I can see info, whatever, whatever. But for me, I'm gonna book a flight myself. I'm already at Sikupe and you don't see any flights here. This is because we have a network, but in our network we don't have a regular, regular service on Sikupe. So there's no flights here. What I'm gonna do, as an intercontinental pilot, I can put in a charter flight and now I see the aircraft that's here, which is the DC-6 with this registration. So I'm selecting it and I'm going to FQMA. Are there any packages I can take? No, nothing in particular. This means there are 32 passengers here that want to go to Maputo. This is all done by FS Airlines, our pre-rep uh, presentation with all other kinds of airlines in here, VAs. And basically, everything around aircraft and cargo and packages and passengers is arranged in this program. So for today, we have regular cargo um, of what is it? Here is for general cargo, four thousand pounds, and we have thirty-two passengers. Remember these thirty-two passengers, four thousand pounds. Okay, this is my briefing document. And this is everything I need. This is the estimated fuel, but beware, this is the fuel that's only used from A to B. So nothing about uh, taxi, uh, um, getting up to altitude, uh, meaning that you have higher rate of flow of fuel, uh, descent, holding pattern, stuff like that. So this is the bare minimum. Normally what I would do is uh, what I need plus half. Um, what you can also do if you fly IL airliners with us, you can go to SIGBRIEF and it fills it out, pre-plans pre it out. I put an air number in here and then you get the route already. Or if you want to change that, this is uh, for modern day FMS. Um, if you want to go only full VR to VR, it's not even able to generate because there's only one VOR it is here. So I'm not gonna use this now. But normally when I'm flying airliners like an AVD20 or the, the Mad Dog uh, or a Boeing, uh, you can use this of course and then use that as a uh, also interpreter into FMS of the aircraft. So just an example, I'm not gonna do that now. What I am gonna do is open Libre Nav Map. And we see here already I put it in. Sikupe to Maputo and the VOR there is 112.7 so FDSK FQMA I'm gonna put it in FDS 
počkej. Počkej. Just in a regular thing, of course, you can also export from the nav map. There's all kinds of ways to do this, of course. If you are to VR. It's not putting in the VR here, even. That's weird. It doesn't really matter. 112.7. Yeah, the thing is here um, in the MSFS, you do direct or VR, which is under VFR, and IFR is only on low altitude, high altitude airways. So, meaning if I put in an IFR, then I get really weird results on my ATC, which isn't the best, of course. So, VR to VR it is. But do can I see the VR station here, or does that not show up? does not show up okay as long as I know it ATC is of less importance here I'm not starting on the runway of course I'm starting on this parking space ramp 8 and then we go flying while it loads up I'm going back here because remember this we had the fuel used 3300 let's say 3400 Half of 3400 is uh, 15 to 1700. So I'm gonna take 5000 pounds of fuel so that I have ample fuel to get there but also to get away. Normally, Simbrief does this, um, but as I'm doing it by hand, so to speak, this is what I'm planning. So 5000 fuel, 4000 cargo, and 32 passengers. That's my load. And we are aboard the Douglas DC-6. Early prop liner. Very cool to see. Four R2800 double wasp engines. Delivering a total of four times almost 3000 horsepowers. Um, pressurized. This was one of the earliest aircraft that could cross the Atlantic Ocean in one go. If there was a headwind, then they'd either top up at Gander um, in Ireland or um, come Nova Scotia. Um, but as it is, this is a pretty cool plane. What's also cool in this is that we have all kinds of help here. Um, I'm not gonna take these all. Come no. All kinds of on the ramp manager for the for the aircraft for the doors and stuff. And what we're gonna do here is load up. So we had four thousand. Can't see what I'm doing because of the pop up four thousand three hundred. Okay, I want five thousand fuel. We have plenty on board, so let's make it um, five thousand is the m minimum. Then I want to take. Let's put it to two thousand on each main tank. That's plenty of fuel. Um, what's also cool is all about the engines and the wear it's gonna y you're gonna do on this really cool now it's all set to zero because this I've never used this repaint but this is repaint based and of course the artificial flight engineer because you do anything in this by yourself but of course this is an aircraft that's normally done normally handled by a multiple crew by a three-man crew the co-pilot the, co the pilot the captain and the flight engineer you can do everything by yourself, which makes it really handful, or you take the uh, AFE, which manages a lot for you on all the switches. So what I'm now going to do is say, make me a before pre-departure check. 
And now you see all kinds of switches are handled. Click, clack, clack, click, click, clack, 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 clack. Completed. Completed. Moisture recorder. Tasted. Oil coolers and cow flaps. Hold to end position. Fuel and fluids. Checked. Pressurization. Sit. Manifold and duct pressure. Checked. Radios. Door warning lights out. Gear pins. Let us three on board. Finish. Seat belts and pedals. Adjust it. Throttles. Sit to idle. Propellers. Forward and Start checks complete. Start engines. Let's leave this one. Okay. So you see everything is already run on the pre-departure uh, check. So now I can do the start, and after that I have the after start check, and the before takeoff check, and the takeoff check, and the actual cruise setting, descent settings, and when you're on approach, the in range and before landing and after landing and parking checks. You can do this always by yourself. You can just switch it off again. But if you switch it on, then basically the flight engineer is doing stuff and you can break in on it. It's a very nifty thing, um, which I actually find more helpful, better useful than in the P3D version of this aircraft. But okay, that's in delivery. Um, what I'm also going to do is now open up our FS Airlines. I'm going to look at the flight information. I booked something, and that booking is in here. It says something about our passengers. Oh yeah, 32 passengers. I have to do that. I didn't do that yet. Thirty-two. Okay, this is done. Because now when I click fly, everything is done here, taken from the sim. I can change changes. If I change this, then it will change in the sim. If I change it here, it will change here. But when I say fuel up and then fly, then I can't change anything anymore. You can also can't slew anymore just to make it sure that you're not cheating by slewing from one airport to the other so basically you're fixing your sim this is a very cool interaction between the client and uh, and the sim so this is all good fly okay from now on my flight will be registered what i'm doing and if i look back in here if i go to the airline stuff then you see here a yellow dot meaning i'm en route Green is available, red is a flight is booked. And if I go back to book flight, I've got already this is basically still my uh, my summary of the flight. Okay. From now on I don't have to do anything with the uh, PREP flight stuff again. So we're flying to FQMA, Maputo, it's a very short hop. Um, this aircraft can do just more than four thousand miles, um, so fifty miles is a breeze. Um, let's set her up for start. So what I need is fuel pump, and what I need is fuel. So I'm gonna add on all the fuel stuff, rich auto rich mixtures, and I'm gonna add on all the fuel pumps from the main tanks. They're all on. We've got alternative tanks and main tanks in this aircraft. 
alternative pumps doesn't mean they're backup pumps it means they're pumping for the alternative tanks but the alternative tanks as you can see are empty we're not using them this flight we're only using the main flight the ma main tanks there's a whole section which covers feeding an engine from an alternative via cross feeds and pumps it's way complicated i'm not going to do that on this flight so i'm setting engine free and i'm putting it on start Three. and it will count the blades Six. Five. and at 12 i will add 12. primer and booster which basically is a shower of sparks to get the engine going Which it isn't. <laughs> Engine's not starting. What's this? So, oh, my track car is going berserk. I've got main fuel pumps, I've got main fuel. Again. There we go. Let's see if it catches on. We're taking oil pressure. This is very important, of course. And the engine is running. What I'm going to do is put them slightly above 1000 RPM. Let's say 800 RPM. To get the engine warmed up okay engine 4 basically it's now a rinse and repeat put the starter on Three. count out the blades Six. Five. Twelve. add prime add sparks <laughs> it's those kinds of days. Yeah, that's what the DC6 also does. And I did in the options put in realistic starting. Um, it can be quite a handful to start this beast. Oh, putting it back. RPM is over 1000, and you don't want that on cold oil. Again, start. Now I'll put the prime in at 9, put a little more fuel Five. in. Twelve. Spark it. There she goes. What's the outside temperature? At the moment. Free air temperature. Above 20. Okay. Engine 4 is running and going stable. Going to engine 1. And finally, engine two, starter. Three, six, five, twelve. And let's also catch you on. Now that we've done that, engine selector back to off, and we let the AV do the after-start checklist. 
Faut que je t'enchauffe. Plein Plane battery on. Generators and inverters are all checked on. Those are here. Emergency on. lights are all here. Try with ATC. Ground private operator six IFR to Maputo ready to copy. Private operator six is clear to Maputo airport as filed. Take off runway zero two climb and maintain seven thousand feet. Departure frequency is one one eight decimal five squawk four zero three seven. Seven thousand feet. Six cleared to Maputo Airport as filed. Take off runway zero two climb and maintain seven thousand feet. Departure on one one eight decimal five squawk four zero three seven. Private operator six read back correct. Contact ground on one two one decimal eight. Good day. This is a nice part to see if the engines can get warmed up. And in the meantime, the runway 02, meaning where I am, I, I am here, so I have to do a I can taxi in front. There's no line here, no. And then do a track back 02. Because there's no taxiway, this is a service way, not a taxiway. Okay. Ground private operator, six ready to taxi IFR. Private operator, six taxi to and hold short of runway zero two via taxiway cross runway zero two. Contact tower okay. on one two eight decimal zero when ready. Taxiing hold short runway 02 using taxiway cross runway 02 private operator 6. I'm going to use my little tool here. Little pre plan. Still contemplating on getting uh, GSX. It was so great in PVD, but still has its kinks in the new sim. So I'm not covering it yet. But of course, then you get all the animated pushback stuff, passenger boarding, etc., etc. Now I'm gonna take a tour here, take the taxiway over there, then back to back. And there we go across the runway and then backtrack the runway 02. And then take off. Here we go. You should notice that the throttle levers are now under my control. When I order the AFE to do something in flight or even on takeoff, 
which uses um, throttle settings, then the AEV takes over. This is a poor route to take with all these aircraft here. But I'm not out of bounds anywhere, I'm not hitting anything. Just doesn't look too bad. This aircraft feels enormous. But on the other hand it isn't of course. Oh, a bit too fast. It's smaller than a Boeing 737 or any other small commercial jet. And we're gonna backtrack a runway zero two. Clear. RVA has some very talented three painters, but alas, for this aircraft still none. Otherwise, would have flown this in the uh, Anders Meridian livery. But it's not available yet for this aircraft. Or for the immersion, but okay. What this does of course is because now I'm flying for a virtual airline, meaning we add revenue, um, we add a payroll for ourselves so we can buy stuff virtually, um, but of course it helps the airline grow and with added revenue we can add more routes, you can add more facilities like cargo facilities, maintenance facilities and of course buy aircraft that people would want to use. Selling aircraft when are not in use anymore can also be done. They can be sold to other VAs, or back to the uh, in the end to the uh, basically the the the, the PRAP organization, pilot reporting organization. So it's a lot of fun. It it's it adds to the immersion of flying for a goal instead of just flying. If that makes sense. In our particular VA we have ranks adding to, well, the more hours you fly, the, the bigger the aircraft become that you can fly, the longer routes you can fly. So you start as a training pilot with two seaters and then go on to bigger aircraft, then go to regional, which comprises of small jets and turboprops, all the way up to intercontinental with charter rights. So there's a gain also in there for pilots. Okay, throttles closed. I hear a pling. It means I'm doing something wrong. Maybe taxi speed override. It could be it. There are some rules in the uh, PRF that also monitors your uh, flight behavior. Enthusiastic. Okay. Then I'll do my run up checks before takeoff checks. Flaps 20. Flaps 20. 
CDAV is totally taking over the command on stuff. You can still impact stuff, but if it's a uh, throttle handle or something like that with a setting, then it's then it's it locked out. All the fluids are good. Controls locks off. On. On. With a load over there. Set. And I'll set already. Our VOR. And our course for the VOR is 7-7. Seven seven. So already put it in. So we know which way to go. Then I will ask takeoff clearance. Tower private operator, 6 ready for departure runway 02 IFR to Maputo. Private operator, 6 QNH, 2 Niner Decimal Niner, 7 wind zero four one at 1 2. Cleared for takeoff runway 02. Cleared Please for take takeoff off. runway 02, private operator 6. 30 inches stabilized. 30 inches stabilized. Okay, now the AV is taking over the throttle, so you see that it's going to stabilize to 30 inches. Throttling up. Those are stable, then we go into full power and I can take off. Stabilized. Cal flaps. Cal flaps. Cal flaps set. Cal flaps set to free. Full power, please. Full power. full power. And I am gonna release brakes as soon as we reach full power. All T's and P's okay. One is around 80 knots. VR rotate. It's on a placket over there. Didn't show you, but it's around 100 knots. So then I'm gonna rotate. Squawk 4037. 
and this race sucks because now it's saying I have to go to turn 8-5 but I'm ready you can see it here on the arrow I'm already at course for the VR so I'm not gonna do that what I am gonna do is turn on the gyro pilot just to make power and then engage the clutch Keeping around 160. AFE put everything on climb power already, so we completely configured correctly. Yeah, this sucks. And we're climbing towards 7,000 feet. Beautiful landscape. That's why I chose Africa because the old Sims. It was a very neglected part of the world, so to speak, so to say. So I thought, well, let's see what they made of it in the new sim. And I'm so far not disappointed. So what we're not covering is the stuff about uh, fuel maintenance, because we only got the main tanks. And nothing about the superchargers, which are normally set at below 16,000, or above 16,000 feet. We're not going to get there. There's some engine operations there, of course. Um, because setting superchargers right now on a full power setting at low altitude would mean that blow up an engine. As simple as that. We'll steer a bit to the left get a good lineup to the Viora. There you go. And if we look at the Nav map, then it will show that we're tracking the correct heading towards Maputo. I'm guessing Maputo will be run by 05, but I'm not sure. As we had 0 2 from uh, Squilly. Let's pronounce it correctly. And let's hold the altitude here. And tell the AFE to put us on cruise settings. You see the en engine levers going. The torque the props are putting out with regards also to the propeller settings, and then these will go to auto lean to preserve some fuel. Seeing already 190 knots indicated. Of course, the higher you get, your, the, the faster you get. When you get an altitude of 20,000 feet, you cruise roughly 300, 320 knots, so it's quite fast. Cruise checks are complete. Not jet fast, but cruise checks complete. And now in a bit of a, a worry, should I let ATC guide me to the landing, or will I do that myself? Let's do that ourselves. Let's tell ATC to go stuff themselves. In that case, we have an ILS on the runway. Is it too free? Yeah. One 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 zero decimal three. Okay. One two six decimal one for private operator six. G 
jittering around a bit. Sucks. Let's go to the radio view. That's so much better. And then we had three VR 110 decimal three. One one zero. Approach. GMA. Victor Might Alpha. Transition. So where's Victor Might Alpha? It's over here. Yeah. So I'm going towards the VOR. But transition from the VOR to the runway, that's a very short one. It's extremely short. We'll see if we will listen to ATC or not. So the airport should be over here somewhere, not yet visible. To approach. Let's see how ATC handles us. Normally I would really start to descend now. So field altitude. Basically zero, one forty seven. Yeah, I've got a descent. Set checks complete. So really, I had so much, so much high hopes for the ATC compared to PVD and FSX, but it still manages to port stuff up. Because if we have an approach into this runway here, which starts over here, and this is our transition, then we have to make a very short turn. So you can never make it, you end up here. And from 7,000 feet, because I haven't gotten the order to descend yet, I'm doing that by myself. You see? Now it's ordering me to go back to altitude. Which is completely silly. So yeah, let's not use it anymore. I'm really itching to get, to get towards maybe using Vatsim. It's a bit of a hurdle to get into. I will tune the ILS already. I will also tell the ILS that we're planning to run 
for runway 23 OBS sorry so 230 out from the UR. So this is Mozambique. Feet. This is exactly what happened in P3D. So now it wants me to climb while I'm also on approach, basically also on descent for approach. It's completely silly. You're 12 miles away from, 10 miles away from your destination to be told to climb in order to approach and this is our airport over here this is our runway this is the cross runway so what I'm also going to do is now turn to the left I'm basically going to do a pattern Two three is on the bottom here. Private operator six, please expedite your climb seven thousand feet. Then I'm centering, which basically means I'm flying perpendicular to our destination on my. I'm gonna descend to two thousand feet as our uh, destination elevation is practically zero. the direction for our ILS entry our transition is on this arrow so I know where that station is at all times I know the distance to the station is from here it's five and a half miles so it's roughly over here if just before the runway so you, you know it's silly to say this is a transition from 7,000 feet and then expect that you can land there so this ATC is really uh, a turn off Unfortunately, I'll descend to 2500, not 2000, the biggest space, and then extend our basic, basically our downwind leg, right downwind leg, until we can turn in on the, on the ILS. ILS active, so now I've got an arrow here and I've got a direction and the altimeter setting. maintaining this altitude Pre-landing for approach. I heard it. I'm Now it says, oh, now I've got up, now, 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 oh, I'm going to do something else. I can go a bit lower, of course, that's no issue now. As I'm moving away from the runway and descending, you see that this line, this altitude line towards the runway is going up. All engines looking okay, all pressures, all temperatures, all okay. 
all in the middle ranges or in the green, whatever you prefer. Now if you look at the left map, you see that we're rounding this basically. So when I reach 1700, I will turn back to intercept the RLS. We don't need it, it's nice weather. So visual landing would be fine to do. So for later, what you need to remember, this wide scale normally in an aircraft says this is the scale in which you can lower your flaps and or gear. In the DC-6, this is about the 30 degree and lower setting for the flaps. So the landing setting of the flaps, anything lower than 30 is landing setting. Um, so flaps up unto and, unto and including 20 degrees is actually 175. It's not on the speedo, but it's basically the horizontal line. If you're below that, you can use flaps to slow the craft down. Holding altitude and putting in the maximum turn. To turn back. And now I'm going to get it back to center instead of approach because I'm out of some kind of an airspace. turn a bit to the south but I think I'll turn off the whole autopilot gyro pilot at the moment disconnect off go away so we're heading south keeping altitude and now we're starting set it to before landing Flaps 20, compensate, pushing forward a bit, as I'm keeping this heading 180, I should be crossing the ILS, so this will go to the right, because I'm deviating from the direct course, and if this line comes in the middle, then I'm directly in front of the runway. Also got control back now to get a smooth in. I'll put engine torque to around 90. Line is coming in. Gears down, three greens. All the AFV is doing its thing. Landing checks complete. Compensating a bit to get back to 
back on the line again and turning it back to 3-3. Greatest approach in history. Putting his on pause. Let's check. Here we are. Here it starts with the ILF envelope starts, and here's the runway. got the glide scope then I'll start it pouring in more flaps. And a bit of trim on the elevator. So I have to reuse my own pool of the stick of the yoke. Don't see a definite airport yet but I think this is it here. Over here. This one I'm going to focus on now. Now of course in ILS this is the glide slope bar. If this reaches the middle then I have to keep it in the middle. So now I'm too low. The glide slope, the glide slope says you're too high. Or the glide slope is above me so I'm too low. I'll see I'm focusing on the wrong thing. As the needle is jumping again to the right. So I have to go to the right to follow the needle get on the correct approach again. Small changes on rudder and ailerons. As the DC6 becomes slow, she becomes wallowy. You know this is completely out of reality, these, uh, these ATC uh, things. Except for using ATIS for the weather, I'd vote not to use it. Now the runway is clear, of course, as we get nearer to it. I'm trying to keep my altitude the same. You see slowly that the glide scope is coming down. When I start to follow it, then of course I have to press a bit, meaning my speed would increase, which you don't want to do before landing, so I need more flaps to do that. So I'm hitting the crossbar, there it is, flaps 30. See if it's going down here, 30. Oh, oh, oh. Didn't compensate for it. Power a bit back to 80. Left 40. Private operator, 6 short, 7 miles northeast of Makudo. Contact Makudo Tower on 118.1 when inbound on the approach. My god, man. background so something is clear to land runway two tree private operator six okay done with that so on full flaps we're on low power coming in on runway two three bit of a crosswind I 
add some fire power because we're descending quite rapidly. We're a bit below Glidescope again. Not too bad. Wind is doing stuff. We'll see what the uh, peer client has to say because I hear some plonking around so maybe I'm too low or too fast, I don't know. Don't know what it was. Here we go. Don't need too much of a flare on this aircraft. Tail strike is very easy to do. It's quite cross the wind. There we go. Reverse the pitch. That's some trouble. Now the pitch, the prop plates are reversed pitch, meaning that we are breaking a lot. Actually, she has a quite short handling. She can land really short. Private operator, six contact ground on one two one decimal seven. Don't try and come blow me by now. Okay, let's stop. Let's let the uh, AFE do the after landing checks. Let me check where can we taxi towards to. Just go straight on and take a place. Okay. After landing checks complete. One two one decimal seven private operator six. Maputo ground private operator six request taxi to the gate. Private operator six taxi to gate two eight the taxiway Alpha Cross Runway. Gate 28. Taxiing to gate 28 via taxiway Alpha Cross Runway 2 Tree Alpha Cross Runway 28 Private Operator 6. So this was the short flight. And we'll hear what all the plonking was about in the background when we get to the gate and shut that down. And then see what we did for the VA. Runway 28. To K28. I have no idea where it is. I have to cross the runway here. This is a taxiway, so I'll follow that. Runway clear. But now I've got no clue. Where is it on my 28? Oh, straight on. 28 straight on. That's fortunate enough. Parking brake on. Parking brake is set. Cut engines. 
and shut down the aircraft. Fantastic aircraft to fly, really cool. If you're a prop guy like me, that is. If you're more into FMS, follow the Magenta Line jets, be my guest of course. This is it. Okay, going to the client. You see it's as handed. I can write some comment here. ATC default was crap. <laughs> Next. This is what we did. Fly here, two here. This is the distance, this is the duration. We had 32 passengers. We paid from our bank account the fuel. This is what the tickets that we sold business and first class. Minus crew and catering. Cargo costs on the amount of 4,000 feet. Um, there's a bonus in here, I don't know why. This is the profit that we made. We have a multiplier in there because it's much more than, of course, than normal. But it's a multiplier in there so that you save more with your VA. You can turn this down when your VA is big enough, basically. And the own pilot salary, which is 25% of normal because of my ranking in the VA. Yeah, I had an overspeed on taxi. That's what I had to chime at the uh, beginning when we taxied out. A little too fast on taxi. And that's it. This is what it is. Now, if I go to the website, then you can see that the flight was done in. This is it, 53 miles, 95% salary income for the VA. And if I look at the total, then you see that the rating went down due to an overspeed on taxi. This is my name, this is the airline, this is what we did. And this is the all the income and stuff like we did also. And this is the map that we flew. You can see very clearly what we did on landing. Very nice. And of course this is in then in the total of the uh, VA stuff. Here you see the flights, the flight activity. And today there's one flight in the lower range which is mine because I did a uh, m less than 100% flight because of the taxi over taxi that's basically it now of course we have finances and uh, our complete routing uh, system is here the fleets that we have this is fun to see this is administrative fleet these are on sale on sale or leased to other FBAs this commuter fleet intercontinental international fleet so if you look at international these are our international aircraft one of them is the aircraft that we've just flown with their value, want to look at the aircraft. This is it. This is the configuration on seats. There's so much stuff here. Really in depth, really cool, and fun to fly as a part of a company, so to speak. So yeah, really cool. This is my recording for now for the l uh, this short flight. Um, my next flight will be longer into. Uh, Seret Sekam, Gaborona. I've never heard of it. Is it Botswana? Botswana, Botswana. Anyway, that's a long flight. That's 371 miles, so that's around one and a half, two hours maybe. Then another longer, then a really long one all the way over here. From Strijdom to Harare. This is going to be a cool trip. And this aircraft is very much suitable to do it. Um, this is my recording. Thanks for watching um, about VA and uh, the DC-6. Um, if you have any questions about the VA or want to join the VA, uh, go to andrasmeridian.com. Um, do we have it on the website here somewhere? No, but I can do this. 
this is our website if you're feeling like okay I want to know something about this more about our fleets about our routes uh, I want to join you guys um, feel free to visit and to apply thanks very much talk to you later